Once again, a uh, very warm welcome to this panel discussion. The subject um, and the topic is Guardians of the Digital uh, Realm. Can we get the audio? Fine. Okay, wonderful. So I'll do a third take on this. Good afternoon. A very warm welcome once again. Uh, this is a very interesting topic for a country of 1.4 billion people. And if you do a like-to-like -like comparison, there is only possibly one country uh, that we can compare with in terms of total digital interactions or uh, transactions interface with its citizens. And that therefore poses a huge opportunity for business and massive challenges in the realm of digital security. And this panel uh, is very appropriately titled Guardians. Uh, we are not calling them guardians of the galaxy, but the guardians of, of, our, of digital Bharat, of cyberspace. What I want to do is uh, uh, take a quick topic to the entire panel for two, two minutes each in the roughly 30, 35 minutes that we have and before we get red carded, for you to give us the key takeaway as to why this issue is very significant and very, very important for India. and. Uh, General, as a Fauji kid, I will start with you and give the mic to you first with the question, how significant is this issue uh, for India and its security? Uh, thank you, Siddharth. Uh, good afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen. It's wonderful to be here as part of uh, the Zero Mile Samvad. And I was actually looking forward to this opportunity to interact with each one of you here. I've taken over as a National Cyber Security Coordinator about six months back, and my six months uh, in this particular assignment had taken me to multiple localities where I looked at how can we strengthen our cyber landscape. That's what I looked at. And I realized that there are multiple players in this particular game of cyber security. And each one of us, like he mentioned about, uh, you know, guardians. And I feel that each one of us here is actually a guardian. And, you know, we are all cyber warriors and we need to be aware that our digital footprint is what is there in our vast digital public infrastructure which we have created. I'm sure all of you have a smartphone with you. So your, your, digi your digital identity is there in the, in the landscape today. And that's where we need to understand that each one of us is a guardian. Uh, second, I'm a military man like he mentioned. So when we talk about the, uh, you know, what we looked at uh, country security today, what comes to our mind first is the men and the women who are actually guarding our frontiers, Army, Navy, Air Force, the security forces, etc. But we we forget to understand today that I'll give you an example of the G20 summit which took place in September when we had a largest malicious traffic coming into a country looking at, you know, paralyzing this particular global event which we are actually showcasing on multiple platforms. So there was an attempt to actually cripple this particular event and, you know, uh, we had to work overtime to ensure that such events go unhindered and that's where today uh, the sovereignty of a nation actually is dependent on the security of your cyberspace. You all heard Mr. Vivek Wadhwa, Professor Vivek Wadhwa in the morning today, where he mentioned about data. Now, everything today depends on data, be it artificial intelligence, be it quantum, any field which you look at, data analytics, machine learning, everything, you know, all these jargons which we use today. Everything today revolves around data. And all of you are there, leaving a footprint, you know, of, on, that, on that particular ecosystem. So that's why, Cyber security today is a national security challenge. And each one of us are constituents of this particular challenge. And that's where I live that, in. That's a very good point. Uh, uh, like Prime Minister Modi has said, uh, uh, Swachhta, and for so many other campaigns, he has asked uh, every citizen in the country to be a warrior for that. I think uh, what the general has just told us is that we all are individually cyber warriors to uh, do that. DJP Kundu, I'm coming to you. Uh, the uh, wars were earlier fought with defined territorial boundaries. You defend a complete state uh, and we have a multi-tier security architecture in India. Uh, as a policeman, when you started and were selected for the IPS, did you ever imagine that you will have to deal with unseen forces in the digital realm? And how significant is this challenge for a state like Himachal Pradesh, which we do not associate with too much crime or disturbance. Uh, thank you, Siddharth. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. 
In fact, a uh, lot of water has flown uh, under the bridge in the last 35 years. So when we joined, uh, we were thinking of cattle theft. <laughs> cattle theft. <laughs> <laughs> and pickpockets. So today the world has changed. Cyber crime, cyber security has become borderless. Uh, internet has actually improved our lives. And if we are today aiming at 5, billion, uh, 5 trillion economy, it is largely because of the cyber strength that we have got. But it has also got a lot of problems. For instance, uh, last year alone, we had more than 10,000 crore digital transactions. In fact, in uh, G20, Mr. Modi was showing to others how we actually doing business. But this is also flip side, in the sense that a lot of uh, cyber crime is getting reported, a lot of frauds are getting reported. So the first thing is IC4, which is the main apex thing of MHA. It says that last year we had 10.30 lakh cases reported. And in this 1930, which is a cyber crime helpline, we had more than 50 lakh cases reported. Out of this, only 2% get converted into FIRs. So now the challenge is the crime, the security issues are so much, but we don't have the ability to deal with it. We don't have the legal ability to deal with it. We also don't have the professional ability to deal with it. So it's a huge challenge. In fact, in police stations, half of the time today is spent on cyber crime and addressing cyber security issues. Coming to the larger picture, so what are the major areas? First is espionage, which uh, General Nair mentioned. Second is supply chain attacks, because most of the vendors are foreigners. Third is cyber terrorism. We are increasingly seeing it. Then is ransomware. And lastly is this cyber crime. Cyber crime has proliferated so much. Uh, while we are building the capacity of police, law enforcement, what uh, we find is there are huge gaps in prosecution and huge gaps in the judicial system. We may be able to understand it, but uh, the judicial system does not understand it. And the field is growing so fast, by the time you come to grips with it, you are already outdated. So these are the huge challenges that we have, and we are facing it in Himachal Pradesh also. Vijay uh, uh, Singh, uh, Jamtara has been uh, mentioned in movies. Uh, I'm not going there. But for a, a big state economic powerhouse uh, like Maharashtra, and you know, you, you, you're a policeman who's also now an administrator, uh, tell our audience and our viewers who are watching us across the Business Today universe, what are the most frequent kinds of cyber uh, crimes and issues that you come across? And uh, is beyond policing, is greater awareness the first uh, soldier to defend us? Siddharth, I'll start first with a larger concept which you touched upon, is warfare. And humans, first of all, fought on land, for land. Then the maritime age came and we got colonized. Then we fought in the air. Then we fought in the space. And now we are fighting everywhere. Like the war is in your pockets. So look at how our sovereignty has been compromised at various stages. And today, with disinformation, with cyber attacks, with espionage, with APTs, this whole digital infrastructure, which is going to lead us to this 5 trillion economy, can be capsized within minutes. Now, there are such cyber attacks which can be an existential threat to the economy. Not just this OTP uh, stealing variety and you know social engineering variety uh, from Jamtara and Alwar and various other uh, places. The cybercrime economy across the world has become a $10 trillion business. Never in the history of humanity has crime been so profitable. Imagine that the cybercrime economy is three times India's GDP. Now, what has enabled this? I feel that the governance of the internet is broken. We have built this the way, uh, you know, India was so-called Sone Ki Chidiya, but we could not patch one zero day of Khyber Pass. And we could not patch Khyber Pass and we had attacks all the time and we got subjugated. Similarly, our sovereignty is under threat till we do not have a whole of nation approach, till we do not develop our own capabilities, till we do not have a response mechanism, a framework, I think it is a huge threat to our economy, to our sovereignty, and to our well-being as a nation and people. 
uh, Ashok Kumar Ji. Sir, uh, Siddharth, I'll just... Hey, Ashok, please come in. Because... I'll ask you to ask something. Actually, I want to tell you something. I would like to just tell you something about these speakers. Twitter was acquired a few months back, we all know. And within two weeks, it was hacked. FBI started the investigation and they arrested three kids. 17 years old Nima Fazeli from Orlando, 19 years old Graham Ivan Clark from Florida, and a 21 years old guy. Actually, the 17 years old guy was the hacker, and the rest of these two guys were selling it Twitter hack as a service on dark web. If you search on Google, top 10 hackers of the world, starting from Kevin Mitnick to Jonathan, who hacked NASA at 15 years of age, you will find most of them have done their best hack when they were teenagers. Now, why it is so? So hacking is a child's play or why every time we are finding a criminal who is actually a teenager and um, capable to challenge a system which is Twitter or, or such kind of things. So because I have been investigating crime cases and whatever I have learned, I have learned through criminals. So I truly believe criminals are innovators and they are teaching us every time we are solving a case. We have uh, Ashok Ji with us. And because I've been working, and let me tell you one line about each one of these speakers, because when CP sir asked me to create this panel, I really wanted to find the top most cyber uh, performers or governing officers who are actually contributing a lot. And here are they. So we are fortunate I'm, that they I'm could sorry, make it. Thank you so much. Anybody saying that he's an expert on cyber? He's <laughs> <laughs> But relatively, I, I'll say relatively, sir. So when I meet last time uh, Brijesh ji in Mantralay, he is coding. Karte hai. Can you imagine an ADGP rank officer? He is building AI profiles and AI uh, models, LLM models. Come, come, six, seven models. Tomorrow, no, sir. So he is that level of technocrat. You need to understand these people are actually doing wonders. Sanjay Kundu sir, when I meet him, I am sitting with him, and the level of interest he has about this world, though. He might not be technically sound, but up there are discussed. Kiji, Abhi, Merikha Sani Sepala, Apne, Apne, DCP, Kobola, Mirsa Bath, Malpani Jaga Pona. So, itna jada ki Mereko Sulia, Patakaraturan. This is the level of update they want every day. Abhi Kyora, Kal Kyora, Kistraka Kram, okay? So, Ashok Jig is some silly Saval Pushna Charum, sir. Hamlobi Dodin Pelebi, a session with him. And I was fortunate to have a similar panel discussion with him. Sir, abhi AI ke proliferation hua and we see that from deep fake to cloning and everything is creating issues and Honorable Prime Minister has also shown concern. We just have one law right now. Jab bhi koi sir case hota hai, to 66 e mai file kar dije. Uske lawa koi law hai What do you see that? Where are we lacking in legalities here? Because this crime is becoming actually very rampant. Thank you, Amit ji. And Siddharth ji, you can also add. Otherwise, I... Okay, okay. Uh, I believe, personally, I believe the IT Act that has been created <clears throat> to meet the challenge of cybercrime is very, very weak. It has, you know, almost except one section, the maximum punishment is three years. And three years is not arrestable. To arrest a person, we need punishment to be at least seven years. So we go back to our IPC. Jobi change hori hai, we know it, uh, Honorable Home Minister ne present kar diya bill. But dead so saal purani IPC mere ko jada strong hai. Imagine. Uh, and it is more thorough, I, I can at least put in the fraud cases, hai, 420 section hota hai, 420 we all know. Hai. It has five years. Then there are other sections like forgery, 467, 468. For deep fake and all forgery sections can be used. So they will provide me the arrest powers, not the IT Act. Therefore, something is lacking there. We need to strengthen our laws for cyber security. Otherwise, uh, the hands of security forces are, you know, uh, very weak. The, the money that is frozen from these, uh, in the bank accounts, uh, on the complaints of uh, victims, is, we are not able to give it back to them unless there is a proper FIR, unless there is a proper investigation. So, just on a simple verification, money could have been given back. So, this is what is lacking. Firstly, the laws are really very, very weak. 
secondly the, the, the gaps I'm, i'll talk about the gaps first gap is was in the banking sector and next is telecom sector jitna management expert aap log sab baithe hain ab hone wale hain future mein we are all after you know <coughs> economy of scales we need to grow banking we need to grow telecom we need to grow sales does not mean ki hum crime karne lagenge matlab all this all this money is going to some accounts but all the accounts are fake how come the banks are opening these fake accounts how come they don't know the, the money that was transferred just now has been taken away so all these accounts should be closed banking sector still rbi has done started doing uh, taking steps and tightened the system but still there are gaps telecom sectors recently only they have taken good steps uh, they have uh, even uh, government of india has uh, closed uh, 100 websites uh, so but i think if we have to be regularly on the watch 24 hours on the watch and all these fraud things should be you know nipped in the bud so that there is the gap and third and the biggest gap that is with the policing system you know policing is not that technical a department we are not so technical that uh, we can you know investigate into all these cases of cyber crimes including because cyber crime is is evolving every day hum log un logo ko constable sub inspector ko sikhayenge kitna sikhayenge दो साल में एक छोटा सा ट्रेन किया उतने दिन में एक नया साइबर क्राइम का कोर्स आ जाता है यू नो आईटी चार्ज वन लाख रुपीज है ईयर में बी एट एंड दीज पीपल चार्ज वन लाख रुपीज फॉर ए वीक साइबर क्राइम कोर्स इन जामताड़ा एंड मेवात सो दे आर दे आर ब्रिंगिंग अप दीज कोर्सेज इतना नया नया रोज क्राइम आ जा रहा है तो उसको उसको सीखने के लिए मेरा कॉन्स्टेबल एंड सब इंस्पेक्टर इज नॉट यू नो इज नॉट सो स्ट्रॉन्ग सो देर इज द कैपेसिटी गैप so we should be provided professional manpower professional training capacity building uh, is you know more and more of it is required to meet the challenge uh, if i in may, the first round of if i may intervene just a bit yeah. here uh, so generally there is an impression that police is not up to the mark in in uh, investigating cyber crimes but let me tell you in maharashtra we were the first state to create 47 cyber labs in 2015 and uh, we were always asked this question would your policemen would be able to operate you know complex cyber forensic equipment trust me two months i gave them to play things like u fed and after that they were telling bugs in the system and please go and visit any cyber police station and i challenge you bring your best cyber expert my chap will beat him down wonderful that is, is that the is the problem is let me let me add one more thing your experience might be there i know from my state very few policemen not even 1% are willing to come to the cyber crime well But while uh, the number of cases are you know uh, uh, you you make a good point because i think instead of having a cyber cell a time has come when everyone has to also be a cyber policeman but i i want to get a industry voice okay. because sanjay okay. has okay. been sitting here two three important points and i want you to respond very quickly one that most of the hardware and the software is of foreign origin therefore the threat of malicious actors mm -hmm. uh, misusing this second example of what happened during g20 and then all of these financial crimes that are happening in terms of industry solutions and you represent a company that is in this space what is the best approach that india's administrative policing architecture can utilize to reduce instances of cyber Uh, crime in all its uh, facets yeah first of all i would like to just want to say thanks for bringing me on this panel uh, the very first uh, question that you said about uh, the, the hardware comes and the operating system everything comes from outside yes, keep uh, it close yeah so whatever uh, we are using is definitely most of the technology that we are using is not uh, indian genius it's it's uh, we are using from us or other countries actually the thing is no matter which technology you use the i have seen threat writers i have seen uh, hackers i have i have dealt with them throughout my life actually i am i'm doing this for last 30 years and what i've seen the change in them i mean to say when i started my career into this i there was dos dos operating system and we used to deal with one or two viruses per week and if you see the figures now they are 
five lakh viruses, new new viruses per day that we are seeing. Now this is the change, the scale at it which it has grown exponentially. The reason is everything has gone digitized. We all are now dependent, and it is unavoidable. We cannot like suddenly stop using these things because it is like we are into the ecosystem where we, if you don't use that, we'll be out of the business. Like kind of go to stone age kind of thing. And vulnerabilities are something that will always be there. And I mean to say, the design itself was not secure for all these things. And now people are learning out of that. And the very important thing that government can do is, the very first thing is to create awareness among everybody. Because, see, the, no, the, because the government has been doing, but I know for 20 years, all telecom network service providers mm -hmm used to consistently oppose what DOT and itself or uh, used to do. Uh, and I'm not even talking about software companies. Uh, you know, many of them are absolute uh, monopolies. So why is it just the government job? What is the industry doing? Like uh, the, uh, the yeah, question yeah. of I mean, what the banking see, industry is doing has come up. What about seeing, industry? Seeing industry is definitely doing. In fact, if you we talk about us, we have a Quigil Foundation which is doing cyber education from school to colleges to the students and the teachers around there to spread it awareness among the further uh, non-educated community. And we have covered almost like I'll say five like students this year itself. Now the point is it has to get embedded into the education system itself. We, it cannot be externally it, because it is something that needs multifaceted support. And if you see our education system, right from school to college, there is no subject about cybersecurity, no subject about what kind of scams, frauds can happen around that. And as somebody right now... Maybe it is time for the Board of Governors of IIM and Weber Dange is here and others to perhaps take note of this suggestion. At least at this tertiary level of education, something could be done. Please yeah, from the continue basic, to your point. Basic yeah, of course, level, it should be done yeah. from basic schooling, but at exactly. least and since because we are it, here it at makes aware. And because, see, we see children going on social media. We see everybody starting from the whole new generation is now not even using computers. They are completely directly onto the cell phones and connected to internet. And their life is like half of the time is on internet. So all everybody is not aware what is happening out there. And as you rightly pointed in your second question about these important events like G20 and all that, uh, what I have been seeing and I've been protecting these digital assets, the any time, every time our country tries to do progress, uh, may it be Chandrayaan, may it be uh, G20 meetings or even sometimes uh, important events like uh, World Cup, the world out there starts attacking us like anything. And I've been seeing the threat going so high that we really have to put our team on toes that 24 by 7 we have to keep monitoring them. General Nair, I'm sure people will say that since uh, India gets attacked, is India also retaliating? Are we surgical strike? Are we, you know, countering this? <laughs> no, it's uh, actually mean yeah, it seriously in terms of our counter-offensive capability. Yeah, Siddharth, the, the point is valid, but you, you know the the best method to remain uh, in being a cyber soldier is being anonymous in this entity. You know, there should be no attributability to where it has come from. Like today, uh, one of the challenges on Cyber, you know, how do you say that there is a cyber violation which has taken place? It's, it's a very difficult venture because there's no attributability to cyber acts. Exactly. So this is a challenge which we'll face. So if, even if you are carrying out, nobody's going to tell you very frankly that, you know, we are carrying out these operations. One. Now, the second point I just wanted to add on to is that, you know, we talk about national security. Now, there's a thing called a comprehensive national security, which are, this is a function of multiple elements. It could be your, you know, your capability in economic domain, in, in your judicial domain, it could be in your health sector, transportation sector. New uh, added one is health sector where, you know, we saw it during the COVID that you know, it's essential that we protect our health sector. Right. Uh, we also have, uh, similarly, technology now being part of, you know, our national security apparatus. So we need to now factor in technology as part of it. And one of the elements which connects all these, you know, elements of comprehensive national power is actually the cyber domain or the ICT networks which are providing you support. So a point came about on, okay, well, how do you protect your telecom networks? So there is a national security directive on telecom where the equipment, the, the hardware, software, which are put on our telecom networks need to be from a protected, it should be from a trusted source. The products which you use are to be from a trusted, has to be a trusted product. So there's already a government uh, initiative on this particular domain. And this will further ensure that our supply chain security is addressed. One, this is something which 
uh, you know, we have, uh, you know, we should take it forward. Second is on skilling issues, which came up about, you know, policemen not being, you know, skilled enough. Now, it's a challenge which we have faced across the board. You know, like uh, uh, the, my friend from the industry mentioned about, uh, you know, the awareness which is there. You know, we need to have our school curriculum having some, uh, you know, topics on cyber security. You now, cyber hygiene is a thing which we all need to practice as citizens of our country, which I had mentioned in the beginning. Now, do we have or you know, we churn out so many computer science graduates in our universities? I think one of the most popular courses is, is BTEC computer science. Now, do we have a capsule on cyber security as part of the computer science capsule today? I'm sure many, many of you are computer science graduates here in the audience, especially the students. Do you have, have you had a cap, you know, capsule on? Them, should yeah, we ask them to raise has, hands? Has, How has many, many have? computer science graduate gone through a cyber security capsule in your curriculum? Uh, there's only one hand or yeah, maybe two hands. hands. Very few so hands. This is the challenge which we are facing. You know, so we churn, churn out cyber security, uh, computer science graduates, but we have nobody trained, no capsule on cyber security. Now third, now the, the challenge is so enormous, do we require a cyber security university? Something which I'm actually, you know, we require skill sets right from the bottom level to what he mentioned about, you know, offensive operations in cyber. So these are all skill sets which our nation today is looking for. And that's where uh, I think the, the, the academics here, the, the, the corporate entities which are here should actually focus on. And before I uh, hand I over think, back uh, to Siddharth, one request I have for the corporate entities, you know, uh, and the management gurus, the one who are learning also behind. You know, our investment of the industry on cyber security domain is actually not, it's, it's, it's absent across the board. So we need to invest in cyber security as a corporate entity today, any industry for that matter. It could be at the smallest level, but have basic cyber hygiene as part of your IT ecosystem. You need to have CISOs at every level. It may not be, you know, but you could have skilled uh, professional employed for this. But as the industry becomes larger, I think you need to focus on cyber security. I'm sure the ransomware attacks today, I'm sure you all heard of colonial pipeline incident which took place in the US. Sir. We'll just check through a test. So everybody has a mobile phone in their hand. Just open your phone and browser and type a link, privacy.net slash analyzer. And you will see a page, start test, and it will start exposing you some of your personal information. So it is just a click and it can reveal so many personal things. Privacy.net slash analyzer. And there'll be a page, just click the start this button, it will tell you your location, your SIM card type, your device type. Okay, so there are, there are several people who are doing that, but um, uh, uh, DGP Kundu, you wanted to come in when General Nair was speaking. Uh, and let me just add so, quickly, for, uh, yeah, go ahead, ask just, your question. Ask why, your question. Why please. I mentioned this here, because it is so easy. And each one of this information, I can use it to hack your phone. Everything, even battery status or browser uh, well, uh, uh, version and everything. So there are so many other details. My point is that even if we teach cyber awareness or hygiene, we are doing lots of things. I4C is doing lots of effort. State governments are doing, schools are doing, everything is doing. But this world is very fast. It is changing very fast. Right. I'll right. tell you 10 methods today to steal OTPs from somebody's phone. Next week I'll come, I'll tell you 12 methods. So it is that fast. I think we also need to keep this in our mind that whatever knowledge we, we are passing, that is updated, that is latest. Yeah, it has to Otherwise be updated. Otherwise, it, it won't have a value. Go ahead. That, that's go the, yeah, go, okay. go ahead. Uh, so, he's talking about cyber security. What I feel is it can happen anywhere, anytime, and it can be anyone. So, he talked of Himachal Pradesh. I uh, told about cattle thefts and pickpockets. So, about six months back, we had a cryptocurrency case in Himachal Pradesh. So Himachal Pradesh is a Himalayan state, laid back, easy. We thought such a high profile crime can never happen in Himachal Pradesh. But it so happened that uh, when we investigated it, it was more than 2,500 crore crime. And who are the people involved? They were not very skilled. They were earlier MLM, multi-level marketing executives. They used to do marketing for Ambays and all. They started cryptocurrency and marketing in cryptocurrency. Now, most of the money went to Dubai and where, where it has gone, we really don't know. I have written to government of India also. Now, if we imagine that the big attacks or big crime will happen in big place also, that is not correct. It can happen anywhere, anytime. And a uh, lot of these accused have actually run away to Dubai. And the legal process is so complicated to get them back, get the money back. 
when we went to the statute books we realized that there was no law but what came in handy was a 2019 law by the finance ministry called buds banning of unregulated deposit scheme luckily that had a punishment of more than 10 years so when we arrested these accused and took them to the magistrate magistrate actually did not understand he says i cannot give remand but we said if you can't give remand there's no way we can interrogate there's no way we can break this case ultimately we succeeded in this and i am told that lot of this money actually went for terror funding so where is himachal pradesh back or beyond and where is dubai and where is terror funding so it can happen anywhere any time and i am of the view that we need strong laws strong capability otherwise we are in for a very very bad time okay we have uh, four or five minutes uh, left uh, we'll take comments from everyone i'll just add to all this yeah go ahead sir just yeah. keep it close yeah, hello cyber security is so important that it is said that future wars will not be fought in air or on ground or in water future wars are going to be fought in cyber space therefore the whole country has to stand up it is not just the police it is not just the mha it is not just the national cyber coordinator like general nair we all have to stand up all the industry everyone therefore the first question that cyber crime awareness has to come to the school level you know in our uh, earlier days we did not have all this uh, environmental issues and all in our curriculum now we have therefore cyber crime awareness must be a part from primary itself chote se bachche ke hath mein mobile hai aaj ke date mein so it is a must secondly all the industry everywhere we must have cyber security experts you know every everywhere all departments hum log to bahut sote sote ja gaye over last 20 years खाली सीसो क्रिएट कर दिया उसका क्या क्वालिटी है क्या कैपेबिलिटी है वी नो दे जस्ट नो नथिंग नाइन्टी परसेंट ऑफ नो नथिंग देर फॉर वी नीड टू इंक्रीज द लेवल ऑफ एवरीथिंग एंड वी नीड टू बी यू नो वी नीड टू टेक इट लाइक द नेशनल सिक्योरिटी इशू एज अ नेशनल सिक्योरिटी इशू बिकॉज एज कुंडो ऑल्सो सेट एक्चुअली साइबर क्राइम मनी इज बींग डाइवर्टेड टू अस्ट टेरर फंडिंग cyber crime is being done by nations as a, as a, in a planned way this uh, <clears throat> uh, this this scam now we had uh, uh, power uh, power bank app scam was done by chinese people and we we cracked it and 1500 crore scam and all the money went out of india through uh, through uh, cryptocurrency absolutely it, similarly loan apps chinese loan apps also the money is being transferred out of country through Ab- cryptocurrency absolutely yeah. brijesh ji we are uh, at the end of the time so just closing com uh general nair talked about cyber hygiene begin with yourselves make it difficult for the cyber criminal because you know he is doing a commodity attack if you just create levels of difficulties begin with two factor authentication today after this Uh, session enable two factor authentication bit of a difficulty but do that if you don't know just google just go to youtube how to enable two factor authentication on on your email on your twitter and you are using the same email id uh, same username and password on you know 10 accounts kindly change it begin with simple things update your devices if possible use an antivirus on your device if you have to dispose a device dispose it properly because it contains your personal information it has you know keys to your uh, apps to your personality to your banking account it's not just your email everything you will lose i have seen people who have sent photos of passport on email email gets hacked somebody takes the photo of passport opens an account drains down the whole business so be very careful about your mobile phones because you know your mobile phone is today more powerful than your laptop it's got a better processor and it also carries a lot of personal information don't overshare what you are thinking that you are sharing on snapchat is between you and your friend no it's going on 10 servers across the world and like a tattoo it remains there some day there'll be a data breach everybody has been breached google apple twitter nsa of usa there isn't anybody there are only two kinds of people who have been breached and second who don't know that they have been breached be careful okay that is wonderful wonderful advice
and and judging by your response i think all of you have taken some of these lessons to heart including doing that stress test on your mobile phone i thank the entire panel for uh, uh, coming here and for sharing with us clearly the challenge is huge if you are going to be 5 trillion 10 trillion do know that this challenge is also likely to cost tens of billions of dollars unless we fix it and we need to fix everything starting with our own behavior that will make a big change once again thank you to the entire panel for their time with us today thank you thank you we would like to extend our heartfelt gratitude to our panelists for joining us here today right sir. one minute sir we would now request mr siddharth zarabi to give the mementos to our respected guests Guided by our dedication for sustainable living, I am Nagpur has planted a tree in your name at Simply Pal National Park, Odisha. We hope this symbolizes our shared commitment to lowering our carbon footprint. Your certificates will arrive shortly, sir. Now I'd like to welcome Shrivanti Puranik, a first-year student.